Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for November 12th, 2023, 2023. Hope everybody had a great Veterans Day yesterday. I want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all of the active duty military that are protecting our country right now here in the U.S. I also want to say thank you to all of those who protected us in the past. And with that, I hope somebody made you feel special yesterday. But we're going to get into some news here. We got, of course, Transformers news. There's a little something going on with Terminator, but it's probably not what you think, and I hope it opens the door to some really cool stuff in the future. Ramen Toy with their CAG, which is Canopy and Guns and Gas Caps. We're going to be talking a little more about that. We've got some G.I. Joe news. Actually, more G.I. Joe news this week than we've had for a while. And, of course, there is finally some Star Wars news. It's small. But you know what? It might have a big impact. It might not. But I'll give you my thoughts on this and more. Coming up! So first of all, we do have Show Z. Some cool stuff coming in right there. Mastermind Creation, Ocular Max, RMX 15, Vivance, Vivance, their Steel Jaw repaint to a Voltron. And it is $90 arrival notice. It says sold out. That doesn't mean it's sold out. It means they're processing the orders. I placed my order at $83 right when they first showed up, but they're about seven bucks more now, which is pretty much everyone else's price. And I have to say that I'm looking forward to this. They currently have a sell on their Planet X PXC03. Uh, this is their Nimios Victory Leo. And it looks pretty cool, pretty interesting. Normal price is $145. It's on sale for $130. And they have in stock right now their Japanese version of the X Transbots James slash Bond. 98 bucks. Add to cart in stock right now. I do want to say that I'm not 100% sure which one I'm going to like better in each mode, but I'll be reviewing this thing on Monday. But the American, the US version is sold out. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between the two. And there are coupon codes for the 11.11 event that goes on every year at Show Z. And save 3 on 100, 8 on 200, 20 off of 400, 36 off of 600, 56 off of 800. As you can see, and you can just click on this right when you go into Show Z and it'll give all this to you to cut and paste into your order. Here's the thing, you'll need to order everything at once to get these, and which is fine. But this is on top of you getting your points, your premium points, using your points, and having the lowest price. So it may look like a very small savings, but it's an additional savings on top of all the other savings. Ever since we found out that Fans Toys said, tell them Large Marge sent you for the FMO2 Fantastic Model Ultra Magnus, that thing came out, what's the O2? Because we all assumed O1 would be prime. Now there's this image put in place that shows FMO1 to be Optimus Prime, but absolutely no idea release date or pictures or all that. You can just basically look at the inner part of the FMO2 and imagine it in blue and red. I do want to point out that Fans Toys came along and put these pictures out because they were trying to block X Transbots from having cells. And this is still way out there. And with that, the Prime is way out there. And I also heard the Prime is going to be one of their last figures. Although they have pictures and all this kind of stuff, and we have an expectation, it's not going to be anything anytime soon. Five years out minimum is my expectation on it. But I also want to point out, it didn't stop X-Transbots from selling out their version of Ultra Magnus three times. Here is Dreamstar Toys, and this is their Encourager Combiner, their take on... What people are telling me this is actually supposed to look like if Bavers had a Superion, what a Baver Superion would look like. And I never put that one and one together. I don't even know if that's 100% accurate or true, but I'm starting to warm up to that idea. I think that this does look pretty good, but as you can see, they have to handle it all strange because I'm hearing this does not work very well. It doesn't stay together as well. I'm not really sure. I haven't handled one but I haven't heard much good about it. Uh, what have you heard? What have you seen? And what have you experienced if you've handled one of these? Yeah, Superion's one of my favorites, but uh, anyway, this is Fans Hobby MX20 uh, X Load is what it's called. And here's the bot mode of it. And this is um, another one of those that's part of a much bigger deal that's going on. Here's the alt mode to it. And 
yeah, putting out more pictures. I kind of a little bit get confused because Fans Hobby's got so much going on, so many different figures, and they're all bits and pieces to make a bigger one and combine, which is really cool. It's an era that I didn't pay close attention to, so I don't know a lot about it, but it's still kind of fun to show these pictures. And we got the Flame Toys Cura Kari. I can never say it right, but Autobot Jazz. And it is a stylized version of Jazz. does look pretty cool, pretty interesting. And of course, you can get that chest shrunk real down. Real down? Down real far? If you do not have to make this guy transform into a Porsche, if you don't have to transform, then you can do a whole lot of different stuff. But this is the picture that they showed. This is kind of an alternate setup that you can have with the doors and all that kind of stuff going on and close up on the face and the body. Looks very interesting, but when I think of the Flame Toys, I kind of think of them and 3-0 in the same pocket. And I really like what 3-0 is doing with their MDLX line a little bit more. But we'll find out because I did order this, pre-order this, from ShowZ. So I'll be checking this one out. I might be getting into a whole new line, an eighth, ninth line. No, this is purely going to complement stuff that I have going on right now, I hope. But it looks fantastic. And that side swipe, I mean, like I said, if it doesn't transform, you can get that chest right. So I do want to apologize. I did make a mistake on this Voltron Legendary Defenders. It was a lie of omission because I didn't pay close enough attention. And I just went through the whole thing talking about a $720 figure that I thought was 15 inches tall. I thought it was on par with Blitzway. It's only 12.2 inches tall for $720. Bucks. Now my whole opinion has changed that that is drastically overpriced for a 12.2 inch tall figure. Thanks to all of you that pointed out in the comments. Takara's got more pictures of their Diaclone Tactical Mover. I think this thing looks really interesting. It's really cool. It's not a whole other line that I really want to get into, but I know some people that are really excited about all the Diaclone stuff. And with that, it's cool. Here is a jet mode of this, and it's kind of what it does, turns into that whole direction that they're going this cool it's interesting i wouldn't mind taking a look at one of them and getting one and then telling myself i'm just getting one i don't want to get involved in all of it but what does all of it look like well this isn't even all of it but this is a lot of it this is what they've got going with their diaclone line right now expanding ever expanding very interesting it's pretty exciting i would actually love to watch some people's videos on this stuff it looks very very cool but it's tempting. It's tempting. I gotta admit that. Found a picture of this, what they call Red Drift, based on this Blue Drift, I guess. I have absolutely no idea what's going on with it, uh, what company makes it, how you can buy it, what's going on. But I thought it looked pretty cool, pretty interesting, and I know that for some niche market, there's this whole samurai bot that's going on, and people love this stuff. And for the Legend Scale, I know the Iron Factory is deep into this. I believe this to be full-on masterpiece scale and i thought it looked really cool so i'll pass the picture line of course and find out any information about ordering price availability and all that i'll be passing that along too something kind of different off the wall takara is involved with giving some stickers away for uh toys r us japan website and it's a giveaway and if you order so much like over two thousand yen you get a sticker sheet but also i want to tell you that you get a Sticker sheet very similar to this if you order anything from Show Z, which kind of blows my mind. They're making a big deal about giving you a sticker sheet, but I've probably got 50 sticker sheets now. Uh, not probably not that many, but I got quite a few sticker sheets, and they're different. They have a variety of sticker sheets, and I think that's another fun thing of Show Z, but they're making a big deal as this is a one time thing that will never happen again. So I just want to say I got my Billy request statement for the Saiyan, Saiyan Culture Metroplex. I was saying it right. And it is legend scale. It is only supposed to be about 17.7 inches tall, so a little under 18 inches tall. Next to these beasts over here, it doesn't look all that tall. But next to Legends figures, it's going to look really good. And I, it's $200. So the first thing I want to say is I thought it was going to be like $125 at Show Z, but they have it priced at $195 is what I ended up paying. I think it is still a really impressive feat. And some people are saying maybe it'll get KO oversized and all that kind of stuff. That is a huge feat in itself also. I don't hold my breath or count on it, but it looks good. I gotta come in, I'm gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna review this thing. And I definitely support it because it is super ultra G1. And actually I wanna say it probably, it probably doesn't really fit in with Chug either, but it would be better for your Chug than a G1 would be. And 
So a whole lot of fun sticking to G1 to a T. Now this company that came up with the coolest name ever for a toy company, it's called Mike Toys, MK05S, or MK, yeah, 05S, Skyfire. This is a, a straight up KO of, of the new age. I thought it was a KO oversize, but the more I'm looking at it, I'm realizing it's just a straight up KO of it. I don't know the price or availability. I can't find where to order it just yet, but it looks really good. I'm wondering how it compares to in paint and all that kind of stuff. And I'd be willing to, you know, take one for the team, check it out if I get my hands on one and compare it to the official because I'm just really curious about these kind of KOs and, and a company called Mike Toys. I mean, of course I'm curious. Although this isn't Legends, I group Dr. Wu into Legends because where else are you going to put them? Uh, this is the Extreme Warfare DWE24 Fire Ladder, and it's kind of showing how small this thing is, and I am still extremely impressed with how good these can look, being so ultra tiny in the palm of your hand, and of course, sizes of hands vary. There is a front and a back, front to the back look at this guy, it looks really good, very impressive, very impressive. Now, I've been sitting on this picture for a while, but this is a Legend scale version of Quinnison, and I think it's a 3D print kind of deal. I was hoping this was going to be offered up as an actual for sale item, but I'm looking at it, and I mean, I really don't see the print lines on it. I don't see, I just was impressed ever since I saw it, but I think it looks fantastic. And this is one of the figures that I identified that we need in the Legend scale. And I'd be all over buying one or you know, don't you need three of these? But I would love to have one of these if it actually gets made and actually manufactured. It'd be a lot of fun. Other maker movement kind of stuff, non-F productions. And I've learned a lot about non-F productions since I found this picture. And I've had a lot to say, but it's kind of fun getting to get a little more information about this kind of stuff. Instead of just sharing it and going like a few things I've had to say today I don't know a lot about. But these are actually the figures that are going to be more articulated for Dino Riders. And if you collect Dino Riders, well, you know that the figures are actually kind of easy to get. But these figures are more poseable. They look better than what's actually out there for the vintage. But what I want to say is Non-F has their own manufacturing facility and they can make these things. Why don't they just reproduce the armor sets for each of the dinosaurs so that we can buy those and complete our dinosaurs because a lot of the stuff is broken missing hard to find and that's where the money is the money in collecting vintage uh, dino riders isn't so much the dinosaurs or even the figures in some cases the figures the money is in all of the accessories and components that go on the dinosaurs i wish they would do that I'm not really seeing a whole lot of stuff that i see it's new in the legends world this week but i do see Something that is pretty cool, the Reactive Optimus Prime. I think we saw this last week. Here are more pictures of the Reactive Optimus Prime. And I really didn't know much about what's going on with this. And we'll be getting this soon, I believe. And yes, another week, another Optimus Prime. Well, we saw this one last week. Here's the alt mode for it. Very interesting. It looks a lot different than I was thinking it was going to look. And now that we've seen last week's pictures and this week's pictures. And this is a really good in-hand picture this thing's looking quite impressive. Also, what looks impressive is the HasLab Deathsaurus. I think that's a really impressive looking offering. Here it is. Not painted up or colored or any of that kind of stuff. But then, of course, they got promo shots. They got a glamour shots going on right here. And it looks really good. And I got to tell you that I think it looks better now than when, you know, during the funding campaign. But I'm still in on Masterpiece Scale 1. But if... There weren't masterpiece scale options. I would have definitely got in on this. I think it looks fantastic. This one looks real good. I'm not super deep into the lore behind it, but you got to have someone to go up against your Star Saber. Star Saber is an awesome looking figure and definitely will work. Okay, so I've got a little bit of information. Not a lot, but they keep putting this out. Hasbro keeps showing this Kartomi uh, Transformers listings for April of 2024. And i got to tell you that... I'm not highly impressed with this, what they're offering. I'm excited about the Junkion and, you know, a couple of these other ones I might pick up. If I see them in person, I might get a little bit more excited about it. But with all of that, 
I'm not really stoked about what's going on right here in this picture, their upcoming offering. So I'm going to lead everyone on to maybe this fan stream <laughs> on November 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern is going to be a little bit better. Maybe they're going to have, they're going to show us the swoop, what the swoop looks like. I really want to see that. And a few other things that we know are coming and on the way and what they're going to look like. We know there's more in the pipeline and we just haven't seen it yet. So that lackluster, in my opinion, lackluster offering they have for April could be rectified by this. All right, so there's this Cyberfest Singapore uh, Dragon Year item in Asia that is like a big mystery. Like, what is this thing? What, what What's it going to be? And I don't know, but it's it's always kind of interesting. You're thinking, well, what could it be? I mean, couldn't this be like a, the Megatron or something? Then there's this picture of the reveal, and I believe that this is just their way of showing what's going to be sold in the box. It is a transformer transforming from this dragon into this bot and uh and yeah that looks cool it'll be interesting to see the actual figure and not just these pictures or whatever they got going on here but yeah it's gonna be a dragon that transforms into this pretty cool all right so hasbro not much going on this week with hasbro but uh with this this two-pack for black friday that's starting to show up right now in walmart's not my walmart and it kind of has a backer piece on it of cardboard. It folds underneath the bottom and the plastic wrap around it. Some people joke about how it's open. There's the plastic free from Hasbro and Walmart says, screw it. We're going to plastic wrap it all. But it does have a wild rider and it has a knockout, which I'm not sure if knockouts body mold sh is shared with a stun and you can use it on your Minasaur. I'm not sure about that, but hopefully you can. Anyway, it looks really good. Really good value. Twelve fifty a piece for these. My friend said that he couldn't get a Wild Rider, so he bought the box set uh, from from Hasbro Pulse, and he's super happy with that. But uh, now you can get a Wild Rider. Getting into non Transformer news, there is Ramen Toy with prototypes of a van that carries a team of one twelve scale figures around with you you know i bet you you could fit the rimco figures in there we'll, we'll see if the legs would work right but looks really good looks fantastic can't wait for the painted prototype because that's going to really blow it out of the water but this is showing you the coloration of it size of it not the coloration of it i want to see the colors but it does look good quite an impressive feat they're already into this is their CAG set canopy and guns, and they're going to have it in two different versions. They're going to have the shiny and the matte, so you can have it for the flash version, or you can have it for the gold version, either one. And so with that, what exactly does this do? There's also gas caps. I don't really need to show all that. That's going to be something coming. They don't really have that. That's just kind of rendered. But I want to show you the difference. When I first saw the McFarlane Batmobile, the canopy looked der derpy. Is that a good word? Derpy? And now it looks correct. Can you look at the difference? Check out that shape. Uh, it looks so much better with this canopy on there than the other one. And if you have the Flash version, you're like, well, what am I going to do with this bright gray canopy on a shiny black vehicle? Well, now you're going to have a shiny black canopy to put on your flash one or a matte one to put on your gold one and it fixes it plus you know the guns look really cool because you know McFarlane and his no guns and there's something called a bridge layer uh I don't know what a bridge layer yeah I know what a bridge layer is it's it's that thing in Valiverse right <laughs> well anyhow this will fit 112 scale figures they're working on this so a lot of cool stuff coming from ramen toy right now or in the future Speaking of smaller creators, uh, I want to talk about Nacelle. I'm actually excited about a lot of stuff Nacelle's making, and I would say everything they're making, I haven't gotten my hands on the Robo Force till I get a sell on them, a sell on Nacelle. But they're coming out with these Sectars figures, and of course the Stellara was only available as a prototype for like eight thousand bucks. If you want to get one, uh, I am a little disappointed that they don't include a bug with her, her companion piece. But I'm super stoked they're just making her. So she's showing up. And I want to show this picture because I think this kind of stuff is super awesome. And look at all that. Look at all that. Those are cases of cases of these. And here's my plan. I have some pre-order to BBTS, but 
it seems like every month or so, Nacelle will do a 15% off of in-stock items. And I think I'll order some stuff from them and just kind of get everything they got in stock. I'm kind of hoping that I can get their Biker Mice, which comes next year in like Q4, and more of these Sectars at the same time and a 15% off sale and combined shipping. That's my plan. But I'm, I'm going to get some from BBTS already. Alright, so getting into some different news. This is Terminator news. It is an anime series that is coming up. There's actually just a very short preview video, which doesn't preview anything. Just kind of gets you excited. But um, a future war has raged for decades between a few human survivors and an endless army of machines. 1997, the AI known as Skynet gained self-awareness and began its war against humanity. Caught between the future and this past, a soldier sent back in time to change the fate of humanity. She arrives in 1997 to protect a scientist named Malcolm Lee, who works to launch a new AI system designated to compete with Skynet's impending attack on humanity. As Malcolm navigates the moral complexities of his creation, he is haunted by an unrelenting assassin from the future, which forever alters the fate of his three children. So, it sounds good. Sounds cool. It's animated. Cartoon. But, will there be toys? All right, so for whatever reason, there's a whole lot of news going on this week for G.I. Joe, but it's kind of slipped out. There's going to be Triple T, Triple T as the next crossover. It's going to have Sergeant Slaughter and Leatherneck, as it shows in the picture. So that's cool. There are going to be O-ring figures on card backs with a cup transformer. That's what I'm hearing. And if so, that's cool. Well, I'd like to see how they pull it off. And I'm really curious how badly they botched the cup see with this they make the gi joe vehicle the number one and it looks amazing they make transformer number two not so amazing there are in hand pictures of classified hawk and i think he looks fantastic pretty much exactly what i'd want out of him and a little more of a mature rustic look to him than i expected and i like it i really like this figure it looks great and it works very well in the gi joe world good job Good old JC at the uh, TNI News, as I guess this is his picture, or someone, Toy Newman. Uh, this is really cool. They're, they do reviews also of these figures as they come in. And this is the beginning of the Dreadnoughts that are showing up, the Ripper and all that. I'm super stoked about the Dreadnoughts. And, and you know, here's the thing. When I was a kid, I went after these Dreadnoughts. I had almost every Dreadnought that was made. Loved the Dreadnoughts. They were some of my favorites in the G.I. Joe line. And I still have my childhood Dreadnoughts to this day. Amazon's got Tomax and Zamot for, you know, around $10 each. Like $10.43 and $10.27 or some weird nonsense with the pricing. But it's around $10 each, which is a phenomenal price. Because when I found them for $20 even at a Walmart, I jumped on them. Thought that was great because they were the beginning of the $23 era. Now we're in the $20 five dollar era but they're great figures they look great and 10 bucks each is not bad all right so super seven is pushing this funding campaign for their cobra mothership and showing a dude holding it one of the guys that works there i don't know his name or i would say it but it's a pretty good sized ship it is very cool it looks great i'm gonna tell you this i'm not bashing this at all i think it's overpriced i think it should have been 300 but the problem is, I don't think it's going to unlock the Trouble Bubbles, which is what I want even more than this, the Trouble Bubbles. But I think they'll sell the Trouble Bubbles separate. This thing's only gained like 8 or 14 backers in 2 weeks or some weird nonsense. It's barely moving. It had 1,200 a day and then nothing. I wonder. I'm pretty sure it's going to back, though. It's going to see 4,000 no matter what. So I need to clear the air on a couple things here. But I made a video talking about Super 7 is in trouble. Not really in trouble so much as financial problems. It has nothing to do really with the BBTS cell saying they have financial problems. That is the future orders will be down. Retailers aren't going to order as much. They're not going to manufacture as much. They don't make as much. They don't make as much profit if they don't make as much product. And that is another problem that all companies are dealing with. Not just Super 7. The concern was Super 7 and their funding situation. 
and they they got an injection of 12 million dollars and if you're doing well you don't need an injection of 12 million dollars are you gonna branch out and start making movies or something no uh but i hope brian's knees are okay this is how much stuff how much product is being sold at clearance from 65 percent to 20 percent somewhere around there i have yet to place my order because i'm not sure how much i'm gonna order i'm terrified how much i'm gonna order i love super 7 products and i'm gonna buy quite a bit of this stuff but I did not say this yet, so I will say this, that I have not canceled any of my future pre-orders for Super 7 because I know everything else coming in is going to be in lower quantities. And if you don't pre-order it or jump on it right away and you wait like six months hoping for another deal like this, you're not going to get it. So you're not going to get the future waves at Super Ultra Clearance because there's just not going to be this much excess product because... There's this much excess product now, there won't be in the future. Now, speaking to the value of Super 7 products, now I do have my He Man and my Skeletor from Super 7. They're worth about $150. Now, although these other figures are only worth like $19, these are still worth $100. Hold on, wait, what? What? Okay, my legal team just advised me to retract that statement because I could get in trouble for artificially inflating the net worth of my collection. And in 2023, I guess that's a bad thing. All right, so McFarlane has got their pre-orders up for these Batman and Robin figures. I think they look great. I thought they looked great when they first announced them and showed them. And here they are with prototypes or actual product. Looks good. Pre-orders are up. I missed the ones at Target. That's kind of the ones I wanted, but Target cancels your stuff a lot of the time, too. I just feel like I'm going to see them in the store, and I'm going to roll the dice. Because it's kind of one of those things I'm partially in, and maybe I don't really need them. But they look so good that I will not be able to turn these down in the store. They look phenomenal. And everybody <laughs> agrees, even if they don't even like the movie. I thought the movie's okay. I liked Arnold in it, and, and I like villains that you can sort of relate with. All right, so there's this 2024 Turtles of Grayskull calendar, or I guess that's what they call it, calendar. This is an interesting picture that they put up, and I'm not going to go super deep into each picture and every aspect of it, but Wave 1's going to have a man-at-arms, a Donatello, a Krang, a mutated He-Man, a Leonardo, and a mouse jaw. So that's mouse jaw's trap jaw with a mouser. Wave 2 is going to have Raphael, Moss Man, Beast Man, Mutated Ram Man, Shredder, Origins, Customized, Tog, Mashup, 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 Faker and Splash. Pretty cool stuff. I know people are really excited for it because it's something different and it's two different franchises that are going to be all over this kind of stuff. I'm a little bit in the middle, take it or leave it, but it's going to be hard to leave it in person, in the store. It's easy for me to leave it by not pre-ordering any of it. And that's just where I'm at. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it sells. It is pretty cool. All right, so Hasbro has released images for a new line of kids targeted Star Wars figures as part of the existing four inch Epic Hero series. The basic articulated figures feature modern sculpts, not retro, and will include basic figures, deluxe and vehicles between 10 to 35 dollars release in january 2024 and i got some stuff to say about this i really think that this is a good thing not a bad thing a lot of people are gonna say it's a bad thing or whatever but a lower price point toy line for kids to get in in this past holiday weekend i've been enjoying uh some time in the toy aisles with my son and running around and doing some toy hunts and all that kind of stuff i want to say that i've saw a lot of kids really getting excited about toys in the toy aisle kids do buy toys kids do like toys there's really nothing for them it's all for adult collectors nowadays and that's a whole video in itself but this is good for the kids the problem is that the last line we saw like this was like resistance and it didn't sell at all but these are popular characters another problem for this is that like ahsoka and a couple of these other ones better versions are available at your ollies and your rosses for four bucks so they got to work that through the inventory but anyway this is a good thing for kids and the collector community 
All right, so let me know what you think about this week's weekly news in review. What else is going on out there that I missed? Because I really like to stay in the know. Like and subscribe, and talk to you around.